Hello guys, you're welcome back to Photographics Academy. All right, so today we are looking at how we were able to create this composition. So today's tutorial is going to be more like a deconstruction kind of tutorial, but we're going to try to replicate exactly what we we'll have here right on this image. So what that means is that we are going to go through the processes we went through here step by step as we try to replicate them on this image so you will understand exactly what is happening here. So let me show you exactly what the picture was looking like before. So this was the image when we came into Photoshop. Uh, not really when we came into Photoshop because I've taken time to, you know, touch up her face a little. But I believe you can see that it's almost like the same thing here. Yeah? Then this is the result we got after the whole job. So what we're doing today is to learn exactly how we created this. Maybe during the course of the tutorial, you will learn one or two. That you can apply in your own workflow and see how that helps you so without wasting much of your time let's quickly get started so let's go straight to the image you are using the first thing i believe we did was that we separated the image from the background then we cleaned up the background and all of that so let me take you through that process and part of it is that we are going to remove this light over here yeah initially i liked it there but started feeling kind of distracting so we have to remove it so i'm going to just go to my field go to content aware and see what photoshop is going to do with that beautiful i love that gives us uh reduces the work by 90 percent so we just use close stamp and fill the rest up yeah don't worry don't have to bother about the lines and all of that now let's separate the object from the background we need to make a selection of our object yeah so wait for photoshop Beautiful. So select inverse, go closer and modify your selection. Very important. Okay, so we'll come down. I think I need to make a selection of this inner part. Let me check. Yeah. All right. So once you are done, make a duplicate of your background. Go to layer view, cut and cut off your objects remember cut off your objects now what's the next thing so we need to reload the selection of our object but on the background this time around they will go to select go to modify go to expand maybe we'll expand by 15. so the idea is just to give that selection space from our body then right click go to fill go to content away so if you notice we're not using the Gaussian blob method we're just filling it up for now Good. So once you do that, deselect. So you have your empty background. Now the next thing we'll do is to clean up this background. And how do we do that? We use our mixer brush too. So we just hover over it like this. Remember, on the background, not on the object. All right, so have it smoothened out. If you notice, we didn't use the conventional Russian blood that we normally use. We had to use our mixer brush to paint this manually. And the reason is because we needed to have manual control over every single thing we do here. And also to show you another way that you can clean up your backdrop without even having to blow it out using Russian blood technique. All right, so after doing that, we'll make sure that our object layer is above our background layer. By so doing, you will see your object reappear exactly where she was standing initially. And now we will begin. So the, the first thing we will do, I think I'm going to close all of this. Yeah, just close all of this and leave this to open with our object open as well. Yeah, so the first thing we will do is to definitely introduce our background let's see yeah so this is the background we are going to be using so the first thing we'll do is to introduce the background and to do that we'll just go into the into our system and find it where it is place it over my objects here beautiful so just take it back a little take it up a little then scale in slightly all right, so I want the wings directly positioned like this. But if you notice in the one we have here, two things are visible. The floor is not showing. So we didn't make use of the floor. In this one, we also not make use of the floor. So we just have to send this backwards a little. 
Beautiful. Good. Then drag it down slightly. Press OK. So what we did basically was that we just had to cut off the floor just like this. We used a mask to get it out. Beautiful. Press Ctrl I. Good. So the floor is gone. And we need to make it look like it's on the floor. So we'll just stretch out a little. Yeah. Just stretch out a little. Beautiful. So we need to change the blend mode to soft light. So we just change the blend mode to soft light. And you see it's already looking close to what we have here. Then of course we need to blow it out. So we just blow it out a little so the attention doesn't get too much on the background. Something like this is perfect. Okay. Let's try somewhere around 17. Press enter. So if you look at this plot, the cutout we did was very sharp. So I'm just going to pick up my brush and make that transition smooth. Just here. So just use our brush and blend the edge in. Very, very important. Good. So the next thing we introduced to our original image was that we created a color lookup table in a horror blue, then we dropped it down to 42%. So above the background layer, I'm going to create a color lookup table, a horror blue color lookup table. Here it is. Then we'll drop the opacity maybe down to like 45. So we just see the way it blends the background in with the object. So the idea was to create that was to create that global color grading so that at the end of the day, when you look at the image, it's looking very, very realistic. So after creating your color uh, lookup table, we created a reflection for the object, which I do not think I would be needing in this one because at the end of the day, I removed it, so I wouldn't be needing it. So after that, we started matching our backgrounds and our object so if you notice the the stool she was standing on was quite pure white and it doesn't really look good for the overall color team we have on the background so what we did was that we infused a cyanish kind of color to it so i'm going to copy this hair code then go all the way to mine stay on my object pick up my selection tool and just make a selection of this tool that she is standing on yeah and i'm going to use my solid color to replace it Control v using the color i copied then you can now decide to change the blend mode to soft light or any other thing so i think i'm going to be keeping it at overlay for now so it doesn't get too bright and um, becomes distracting all right so after doing that the next thing we did was our color graded her skin tone <laughs> So after doing that, the next thing we did was I will color graded her skin tone, which is this. So I'm going to as well copy the hair code of the skin. Remember, we are trying to replicate everything. So I'll go to my solid color, make a paste, then make a selection of her skin tone alone, like this. This works really well. We just have to remove it from the hair and some part of the body. So I'm just going to press OK. Use this mask, replace this one so you can now delete this at this moment. Open that up, then pick up your brush. So the idea is to remove the orange from the unwanted places, unwanted places which includes the hair and um, most especially the stuff she's holding in her arms. So we are done removing from the places we do not want. The next thing we'll do is to blend the color with the skin tone. So I'm just going to change the blend mode to soft light and of course reduce the feel or the opacity. So this is the before, this is the after. Amazing, we're already getting very close. So the next thing we'll do is to create a hue saturation adjustment layer for this. So we do not want the four in her hand, the four in her hand 
to still maintain the orange color, we just want it to go down to white or grayish so that everything will look very, very uniform. And to achieve that, we'll just make a selection of it. All right, we have that selected, except that we need to modify here. Good. So once you do that, make sure, just go through your selection and make sure it's good. I'm trying to make sure I have everything that I need to select, just the same way I need to select it. All right. So once you're done with the selection, pick up your black and white adjustment layer or your hue and uh, saturation adjustment layer. I think that works perfectly fine. Then reduce the vibrant, the saturation, increase the brightness a little, just like that. And you are good to go. So you can as well zoom in to make sure your brush touched everywhere. If you didn't, pick up your brush and make that happen. All right, so have that done. The next thing we are going to be doing, let's check it out, is to introduce our feathers. Yeah, so still the same thing. Just let me lift the, shadow, the feathers from here and place it over my object. So we just need to scale in and scale out until we get it fitted exactly where I want it to be. So I want this one somewhere around here. So I'm just going to keep this like this. Yeah, so we can decide to even bring it a bit closer. But let's open up her face, then press OK. The next thing we'll do, I believe, is to introduce the light source behind here. So if you look at this image, you'll notice there's a light cast on the right hand side but there is no light source here so we need to create something that looks like that so to do that we're just going to go to our gradient use our radial make sure you are selecting very warm colors this and um this then press ok press ok you can make it smaller, of course, you need to, so it doesn't get this too distracting. Place it over here. Just keep making it smaller. Nice. Then change the blend mode to any blend mode that allows you to produce that light source. I love what Color Dodge is doing. So we just move this over here. Increase that up a little. Then reduce the fill. Yeah, see that beautiful. So it's there, but it's very subtle. You could hardly see it. So the next thing we will do is that we are going to darken down our stool. So we are going towards making everything look realistic. So we'll just go and reload that selection and use it to darken down our stool using our course, something like this. Then after doing that, we just created a, a random, uh, what do they call it? Color gradings around the image. So if you notice over here, from here to here are different color grading tools that we apply. So I'm just going to be moving each of the sliders and you will see what each of them does to the image per time. So the first thing we have touched is our selective color. So position it over here. So the idea is to just make everything blend. So whatever I'm doing is not a standard, it's just to make everything blend together. So place this over here. And um, we'll place this over here. So you notice the way that the colors are changing rapidly. So after doing that, it's meaning the photo filter will do that well for the photo filter. Yeah, then we'll position it over here. Good. So once you are done doing that, the next thing is to match up your layers. Then we'll move over to the next thing. But before we move over to the next thing, I'm noticing that my shadows in my original image are lost. So how do we restore the shadows? It's very simple. So if you look here, once I try hiding this, you'll notice that the original floor is beginning to appear back. So how can we use that to our advantage? Create a mask for you, pick up your brush and make sure you are painting with a very low brush, as low as six. Then just go under there and just restore some original shadows, just like this. Restore the original floor of that area. So once you do that, you see that the shadows are beginning to come back. Look at that. The another thing you can do is to even introduce a dark curve, something like this. Yeah. 
So this is looking very, 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 very too much. So we can just reduce the opacity. So because of it, you see the way it was looking before. See the way it's looking now. We can even see the object more. We can see a whole lot even better. Yeah. Just look at that. So I think it's still slightly too much. We just bring it down, edit, and good to go. So now we can create a stamp visible adjustment layer above all of this. So we just have to go through it again and make sure we are still having everything in dark. So I think I need to reduce this a little because of the cost we introduced down, which was not in the original one. Beautiful. Okay, so the next thing we will do is to create a stamp visible layer. So we'll just create a stamp visible layer over here. Then we'll introduce our sharpening layer. So we'll just try to bring back details to the image. I'm going to make a duplicate. Go to filter, go to order, go to high pass. So working with somewhere around three, let's see how that handles our image. So I think it's too much because I'm seeing coloration. So we'll try one. One is perfect. Press OK. Then change the blend mode to overlay. So we just have some details back, which is exactly what we want to get. So the next thing we did was that, yeah, after introducing our texture, we created one more uh, stamp visible layer and used it to create a vignette effect. And to get to get that same effect, we just need to create one more stamp visible layer. Control Shift Alternate E. Press filter, go to camera raw. Then go to our effects, reduce the vignette effect, just like this. And you are good to go. So this is it, the before, the after. So the very last thing we did was that we introduced one more photo filter above all of this. Then we close the whole top. So I'm just going to move this. So the uh, the photo filter is just to serve as a global color breathing to bring everything together. So if I take it up, you will notice the way it's working on the image. It's just to bring everything back together and all of that. So, but I think this is too much. So we need to just drop it down as much as we can. Yeah. And this is how we created this amazing composite. So this was where we started. This is where how much we've gone, the before, the after, the before, the after. Go to the comment section and tell me what you think about this particular composition. If you have any question about this, go and ask. I will answer you. If you have any requests, go and make and we'll see how we'll get to that. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. And when you subscribe, do make sure to on your notification bell so you don't get uh, to miss out on anything that will drop here. So every time we drop a new video, you get notified if your notification bell is on. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next one.